Hello, everyone. Over the holiday weekend, President Trump delivered two defining, unifying, and patriotic speeches, which drew widespread praise by those who cherish our values, honor our history, and seek to advance policies that lift up all Americans. The President outlined a vision for the future. The President outlined a vision for stronger and safer communities. President Trump said, after all, what do we want? We want a strong military, great education, housing, low taxes, law, and order. He went on to say, we want safety, we want equal justice, we want religious liberty, we want faith and family, and living in the great communities and happy communities and safe communities. And we want great jobs, and we want to be respected by the rest of the world, not taken advantage of by the rest of the world. He went on to say, we should all want the same thing. How can it be any different than those things? This message is now more important and more timely than ever. Radical left-wing mobs seek to tear down our monuments and our memorials. Everyone from George Washington to Abraham Lincoln to Frederick Douglass and even Gandhi. Misguided movements such as defund the police seek to leave our communities more vulnerable than ever. Case in point, this weekend alone. In New York, there were 44 shootings with 11 killed. In Chicago, 75 people were shot with 13 killed. And tragically, at least five of these individuals were children who were killed in cities across the country, an absolutely devastating loss, and we grieve for those families. Crime such as this is dark and it is divisive. This July 4th, the President said, our movement is based on lifting all citizens to reach their fullest God-given potential. Never forget, we are one family and one nation. We will teach our children to cherish and adore their country so they can build its future. This vision is not a culture war, as the media seeks to falsely proclaim. It's an embrace of our American family, our values, our freedom, and our future. And with that, I'll take questions. Peter. Really, I want to ask you just a couple of questions. The first one, why is the president so supportive of flying the Confederate flag? So I think you're referring to a tweet this morning. Is that right? Correct. Well, I think you're mischaracterizing the tweet. Uh, the tweet was aimed at pointing out that the FBI report of the alleged hate crime uh, at NASCAR uh, concluded that the garage door pull, uh, which had been there since last fall, um, was obviously not targeted at a specific individual because, um, in fact, it was a garage pull, and, in fact, uh, it was there since last fall, uh, long before these 43 teams arrived. Uh, and it was concluded by the FBI that this was, quote, not an intentional racist act. For clarity, I'm asking you about the Confederate flag. So my question is, why is the president so supportive of flying the Confederate flag? The president never said that. Again, you're taking his tweet completely out of context. The president said that NASCAR saw bad ratings because they took down the Confederate flag, banned the Confederate flag. Does he believe NASCAR should? fly the Confederate flag, and why don't they the fly whole, it here? The whole point of the tweet was to note uh, the incident, the alleged hate crime, that it, in fact, was not a hate crime. At the very end, uh, the ban on the flag was mentioned in the broader context of the fact that uh, he rejects this notion that somehow NASCAR men and women who go to these sporting events are racist, uh, when in fact, as it turns out, uh, what we saw with the FBI report and the alleged incident of a hate crime, it was a complete indictment of the media's rush to judgment once again calling this a hate crime when the FBI completely dismissed that. Let me ask you about some of the president's comments this weekend. The president said that 99 percent of coronavirus cases are totally harmless. Which members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force agree with that statement? So what the president was pointing to, and I, I'm glad you brought it up, um, was a factual statement, one that is rooted in science and one that was pointing out the fact uh, that mortality in this country is very low. And I have two ch uh, charts that we'll pull up to illustrate that. Uh, the first chart is the case fatality rate in the United States. And as you can see, the mortality rate uh, has gone like this, the case fatality rate. And also in the second chart you'll see, hopefully they have it up behind me, uh, but the case rate fatality rate in this country vis-a-vis -vis other European countries is much lower than, let's say, uh, France and Italy. And what that speaks to is the great work of this administration with therapeutics and remdesivir and dexamethasone. And that's what the president was pointing out. So I want to get back to John, just to follow up quickly, though. So if you don't die, is it not harmless? 
The president was noting the fact that the vast majority of Americans uh, who contract coronavirus uh, will come out on the other side of this. Of course, he takes this very seriously. Of course, uh, no one wants to see anyone in this country contract COVID, which is why the administration has fought hard uh, to make sure that's not the case with our historic response effort. John. Kelly, to follow up on Peter's question, what is the president's position? Does he think NASCAR made a mistake by banning the Confederate flag? So he said he, I spoke to him this morning about this, and he said he was not making a judgment one way or the other. Uh, the intent of the tweet was to um, stand up for the men and women of NASCAR and the fans and uh, those who have gone in this rush to judgment of the media to call something a hate crime when, in fact, the FBI report concluded this was not an intentional racist act. Uh, and it very much mirrors other times when there have been a rush to judgment, let's say, with the Covington boys or with Jesse Smollett. But, but let's, let's drill down on, on the Confederate flag. Does he think it was a mistake for NASCAR to ban it? The president said he wasn't making a judgment one way or the other. Well, You're focusing on, on one word at the very bottom of a tweet that's completely taken out of context and neglecting the complete rush to judgment what are you saying that uh, ratings are down because they banned the flag? That's what he said. Uh, the president was noting the fact that in aggregate, this notion that NASCAR men and women uh, who have gone and who are being demeaned and called racist and being accused in, in some venues of committing a hate crime against an individual, uh, those allegations were just dead wrong. Does he think, Paula. That, does he think his supporters should not take the flag to Trump rallies? Is he considered banning the Confederate flag from Trump rallies? Well, at Trump rallies, all flags uh, that are not official campaign gear are banned. Yes. Kaylee, why is it Bubba Wallace's responsibility to apologize for an investigation into a news that he didn't report and he never even saw? It was NASCAR that found this, that reported this, and even the FBI referred to it as a news, even if they said it wasn't a specific crime against Mr. Wallace. Why is the president even suggesting that Mr. Wallace should apologize? Well, look, the FBI, as I noted, concluded uh, that this was not a hate crime, uh, and he believes it go a long way if um, Bubba came out and acknowledged that as he well. Has. This was not a he hate crime, as noted by the he's FBI. Been very clear so that, that the FBI found the this president, was not intentional. Why, why one is of he the things, addressing this at Mr. Wallace? So one of the things that's... that's one of this is where the president comes from, and this is where the president stands. And he actually um, hinted at this in his July 4th speech uh, to those in the media who falsely and consistently label their opponents as racist, who condemn patriotic citizens, who offer a clear and truthful defense of American unity. We want a clear and faithful defense of American history and unity. And when you level false charges, you not only slander me, you slander the American people. He believes the American it people are good. Uh, and the allegations and the, the rush FBI to judgment with news. Jesse Smollett uh, in the Bubba Wallace case and with the Covington Catholic boys, uh, we shouldn't be so quick to jump onto those narratives. Those are just You're three examples of those have that have been proven for false. An investigation that someone yes. else initiated, suggesting he was possibly the victim of a hate crime? Yes. The governor of South Dakota flew back on Air Force One after having uh, contact with somebody who had tested positive for the virus. Why was that allowed to happen? Did she have contact with the president on, on the trip back? And has the president um, uh, continued to test negative? since that interaction? Yes, the president is tested constantly, uh, has tested negative, and those around him are tested as well. Uh, but why, what, uh, the original question is, why was she allowed to fly back on Air Force One? with the president when it was known that she had had contact with somebody who had tested positive for the virus. Yeah, I'd have to refer you to Secret Service on that, but I'll tell you this, they take the president's health uh, very seriously. They would never put him in a situation that would put him um, in harm's way. And just one follow up, please. Yes. Um, on executive orders, the president has set a pretty brisk pace on those this year. And um, as a candidate, he had been critical of President Obama's use of executive orders, but he seems to have really stepped up the pace uh, on these. And I wanted to ask, you know, what does he find? Uh, uh, what is the strategy behind uh, issuing more than one a week so far this year? And I know he's getting ready to issue more in the coming weeks. Well, he will use uh, the powers in his executive toolkit to further the agenda of the American people. That's his intent with these executive orders. And I would just note that uh, with regard to the DACA decision, the Supreme Court has uh, suggested he has pretty wide discretion uh, to act. Yes, Jeff. Actually, with regard to the President's reference about the 99 percent being um, harmless, does, does the President worry at all that by downplaying the severity of the virus, that it will lead Americans to be less careful 
The president isn't downplaying the severity of the virus. Uh, what the president's noting is that um, at the height of this pandemic, we were at 2,500 deaths per day. Um, we are now at a place where on July 4th, there were 254. That's a tenfold decrease in mortality. On July 5th, um, 209 individuals uh, down 23% from last Sunday and the lowest Sunday since March 28th. The president's made clear we grieve when just one life is lost, uh, but he wants to note the progress that we've made um, in treating this very serious virus, when we have therapeutics like convalescent plasma, remdesivir, dexamethasone, um, convalescent plasma in particular was spearheaded by this administration, um, he's used, he's pulled down bureaucracy and allowed us to get to a place where we can have this declining mortality rate. Just to follow up on the NASCAR thing, you were saying that we're taking the tweet out of context, but this, this is what he tweeted. He says, has Pat Bubba Wallace apologized to all those great NASCAR drivers and officials who came to his aid, stood by his side, and were willing to sacrifice everything for him, only to find out that the whole thing was just another hoax. That and flag decision has caused lowest ratings ever. How how are we misinterpreting that? I've explained to you, this is, I guess, the fourth attempt, but we'll try it again. Uh, in aggregate, what he was pointing out is this rush to judgment uh, to immediately say that there is a hate crime, as happened in this case, as happened with Jesse Smollett, as happened with the Covington Catholic boys. And in aggregate, those actions uh, made it seem like NASCAR men and women were racist individuals who were roving around and engaging in a hate crime. The president's intent was to say, no, most American people are good, hardworking people. I mean, we should not have this rush to judgment, knee-jerk reaction before the facts come out, the FBI did their job and determined there was no hate crime. Yes, the Mario. Yes, the one, the one, hold on, hold on. Just the one thing that wasn't clear in your response, and that's why I asked about it again, and it follows up on Paula's question, is why should Mr. Wallace have to apologize for that when his whole team and all of these colleagues came around him to show support? Yeah, and that's the best of America, is coming around when the media alleged a hate crime, um, coming around and supporting Bubba Wallace as uh, they should have done. I think that shows how loving NASCAR fans are uh, and the fellow drivers. But I think it's important that we point out the fact that there was no hate crime. The FBI concluded that. Um, and President Trump was merely saying that Mr. Wallace should agree with that consensus. No, yes, Mario. He's saying Mario, he has to yes. apologize. That's what we're trying to ask you, Kayleigh, is why should he Mario, have to apologize yes. about that? I'm not going to answer a question a sixth time. You Mario, go ahead. Have have you have been asked it, but you haven't answered it. Mario, answer. go ahead. Kelly, on the Confederate part, why would the president not praise NASCAR for removing the Confederate flag, particularly given uh, the history of that flag, the symbol that it has for African Americans, and also what it represents in terms of just the, the treasonous acts and the insurrection against the Republic? So why the would praise them for taking that down, even if it's a rating tip. The president um, takes great offense when Americans are knee-jerk reaction summed up as racist. And in aggregate, the picture being painted uh, here in this instant incident uh, seemed to be that there was that suggestion there, when in fact, uh, what we're seeing across the nation is this vast cancel culture where we're going to tear down our monuments, uh, we're going to tear down Gandhi, we're going to tear down um, George Washington. We're going to tear down Lincoln. Um, it's really quite appalling what we've seen happen across the country. And um, the president wants no part in cancel culture. He wants no part uh, in the tearing down and defacing of Matthias Baldwin, an abolitionist, uh, Philadelphia Civil War soldiers, uh, John Greenleaf Whittier, vandalized an abolitionist. He wants no part in this. I mean, he stands against the demonization of Americans, and he stands firmly on, on the side of preserving our history. Yes. He's not. I, I said from the very top of this briefing, he has not uh, m given an opinion one way or the other on that. I just spoke to him this morning. Yes. Why, it, what exactly does the president see as positive or uniting then about the Confederate flag? Why does he? Why did he decide to to tweet about it then this morning? The president never used those words. Those are the words of a reporter, not that of the president of the United Kaylee, States. Kaylee, yes, Phil. Um, the president argued on Friday and then again on Saturday that many of the problems the country faces uh, stem from, quote, extreme indoctrination and bias uh, in the education system. If that's the case, is he working with uh, Secretary DeVos to address what he sees as a, a major problem? Um, you know, what, what steps is, is he taking 
to undertake this, and could you give us an example? Yeah, I, I'd have to inquire about that, about specific steps that he's taken. Um, I'm not aware of his conversations with Secretary DeVos, but I, I will certainly follow up. Um, but look, we've got a real problem in this country. Uh, when you have rioters, who I've listed off some of the examples of abolitionists, um, there seems to be zero understanding of history when you're defacing the statue of Matthias Baldwin and John Whittier and Ulysses S. Grant. There seems to be a lack of understanding and historical knowledge uh, when the Armenian Genocide Memorial, re remembering victims of all crimes against humanity, including slavery, is vandalized. Uh, there seems to be a lack of understanding of history when uh, the first responders sculpture is damaged, when the Polish war hero statue, the World War I Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial, the World War II Memorial, um, and absolutely the Robert Goode Shaw and the 54th Regiment Washington uh, Memorial that honored African American soldiers who fought valiantly in the Civil War was damaged in Boston. We need to have a better historical understanding, uh, and I'll follow up with you about specific conversations. Yes, I'll uh, Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, I have a question about masks. Uh, the President uh, has sort of equivocated on the issue of masks, and we know that a number of Republicans are starting to say that it's the single most important thing that Americans can do to protect each other. Um, what is the President's message to Americans who hear those messages and say that they simply don't want to wear a mask? What, what does the President say well, to the those? The President was very clear last week uh, that if he were in a situation where he wasn't tested da daily and he was in close proximity and unable to social distance, that he would wear a mask. Uh, so he has made that clear. Um, his rally this weekend in New Hampshire, uh, masks are not only handed out, but they are recommended. Yes. Thank you, Bailey. Uh, I wanted to say, first off, point of fact, um, Bubba Wallace did not make any kind of false report. Um, and I'm wondering, in general, why the president thinks that issue is worth his time and focus right now in the midst of a deadly pandemic. And then also, you've said he has no opinion on the Confederate flag. Why can't this White House unambiguously state whether or not it supports displays of the Confederate flag? No, I said... And which I are said much is, more a part of this question than Gandhi. Yeah, I said um, that, you know, he was, his tweet was not to indicate approval or disapproval of that particular policy of NASCAR. It was an aggregate uh, to stand against the rush to judgment to call something a hate crime before the facts were out, when clearly the media was wrong about this. Uh, when clearly, the me I never said that. Um, perhaps one of the reporters said that, but I certainly did not. Uh, but he believes that we should be, uh, that the truth matters and that the truth was the FBI did a thorough investigation investigation um, and what was concluded that there was no hate crime here and we should all um, be grateful for that grateful that NASCAR fans came together in a great display of American unity around uh, Mr. Wallace but then we should also be equally unequivocal about the truth of this situation here and that most Americans are great hard-working people why is yes. cultural stuff worth his time yes. and focus during the pandemic yes he's focused on two things at once something we're all capable of doing. And what about an yeah. unambiguous statement on the Confederate flag? Are we capable of doing that? Look, the president has made clear he was not taking a position one way or the, or the other in that tweet. Exactly. Yes. Well, why not? Yes. Thanks, Barry. Two quick questions, if I may. Uh, does the president support uh, the Cleveland Indians and the football team here in Washington considering changing their names? I haven't spoken to the president on that. And on the other question, uh, who came up with the list of historical figures that the president wants honored in his uh, in this garden of statues that he uh, put out this executive order about. Who came up with the list of people to be included there? So I don't know exactly who came up with that list. I can ask about it, but it's a pretty extraordinary list of people. I think um, we can all agree on the fact uh, that great American heroes are people like Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass um, and Booker T. Washington and Martin Luther King Jr. These are incredible men and women in our history, uh, Susan B. Anthony and Billy Graham. So I think we can all pretty much widely acknowledge that these are American heroes. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. The uh, president signed the payroll protection program extension over the weekend. There's $132 billion in the pot. What does the president think that that, that money should be used for if it's still there after August 8th? And then in a CARES 4 specifically, what should be there to help small businesses? Yeah, so I don't have any uh, updates on phase four. I've mentioned that the payroll tax is something of great interest to the president because it would help um, low, low and middle income Americans most. Um, the PPP funding, they've done an extraordinary job with that. Small businesses um, across the country have gotten this and we've kept people on payroll. So he's very pleased uh, with the progress that's been made there and the continuing functioning of the PPP. Would you yes. veto a bill then that did not have a payroll tax relief in it? 
Yeah, I don't want to set parameters or conditions. That'll be up to the president when the bill arrives on his desk. Yes. Thank you, Katie, so much. As President Trump wants to reopen the country, what will be the criteria to cancel the travel bans? Because we know that the bans are still in place for European countries where the situation is under control. And on the other hand, there is no ban on hotspots like Russia, India, or Mexico, for example. So what is the criteria? Yeah, so I don't have specific criteria to, to give you. I'd have to refer you to the State Department and Secretary Pompeo uh, and his remarks on the topic during his last press conference as where we currently stand. Um, but President Trump and the administration have taken bold, decisive, and frequent action to secure our homeland. And a big part of that has been these travel restrictions. Um, and we're working with countries around the world. Uh, we hope to have a day where inter international travel is open. But right now, uh, this is about putting America first. Um, and I want to say this. I, yes. Uh, European countries, now the UK, are starting to open uh, for foreign visitors, but the US is still banned. How do you think the world is looking at the United States right now? I think the world is looking at us as a, a leader in uh, COVID-19, because the chart I showed you where you have mortality rate in Italy and UK up here and across Europe, and you have the United States um, at a low mor case mortality rate, it's because of the extraordinary work that we've done on therapeutics um, and getting PPE and leading uh, on ventilators and having excess ventilators that we were able to deploy around the world and help other countries. Um, so that's what I would have to say on COVID. And finally, I'd end with this. You know, I was asked probably 12 questions about the Confederate flag. Uh, this president's focused on action, and I'm a little dismayed that I didn't receive one question on the deaths that we got in this country this weekend. I didn't receive one question about New York City shootings doubling for the third straight week, and over the last seven days, shootings skyrocket by 142 percent. Not one question. I didn't receive one question about five children who were killed. And I'll leave you with this remark by a dad. It broke my heart. A dad of an eight-year-old lost in Atlanta this weekend. They say Black Lives Matters. You killed a child. She didn't do nothing to nobody was his quote. We need to be focused on securing our streets, making sure no lives are lost because all black lives matter. That of David Dorn and that of this eight-year-old girl. Thank you.